I do promises make async JavaScript better than callbacks. By the end of this episode, you'll get a deeper look into why promises feel so much better than callbacks when you're using them. And this will all be from a functional programming perspective. My name is Eric Normand, and I help people thrive with functional programming. This is an important topic because I think promises are great and they hold a lot of lessons for why or how we can build our own concurrency primitives, like what, what makes promises so special. Maybe it'll just give you a deeper insight into why you like them as well. All right, so I have a few points I'd like to go over. So uh, promises represent a coordination point. They're often talked about as they represent a future value, and that's true, but they represent a coordination point between two disparate parts of your code. So there's the code that, uh, it's almost not even your code, so you, you'll like do an AJAX request and you get a promise back. So at some point, this AJAX request is going to finish and put the answer, the response, into that promise. At the same time, there's another piece of your code, which is what you need to run with that answer. So there's two pieces of code. The, the uh, HTTP request that is coming in asynchronously and your code. And there's a coordination point because you don't know which one is going to happen first. Is the response going to come back before my code is ready for that value? Or is my, is the code, is my code that's ready for the value going to be there first and it's going to wait for the response? And the thing is, just by the nature of asynchronous code, asynchronous, the asynchronous model of execution, you can't know. And it's going to be different every time. It's going to be different every time which one comes in first right how long each one takes so one thing that happens with callbacks so callback is just a function that you pass that will be called later with the value with the answer but because it's called later you're actually giving up control you're you're saying hey just call this when you are ready right but but you, you um so you're telling that to the HTTP request. Call this with the answer when you're done. But you might not be ready yet as, you know, like the main thread. You might not be ready, the main timeline, let's call it. And so you're giving up control. You're giving it back to the Ajax request, and it's going to, it's going to control when this thing gets called. Promises give you back that control. It's sort of a compromise because the AJAX request does still need some control, but you also need control too in your code to, to make sure that things happen correctly. Um, just as an example, if you need to do, uh, let's say, three AJAX requests, in a typical callback style, it is so much easier. If you need the answer to all three, it's so much easier to just do one wait for the response, and then in the callback, you do the second one. And then in the callback for that one, you do the third one. And then you have a final callback where you have all the answers you need. This is inefficient because instead of doing all three requests at the same time, which could be possible um, because they don't need any data from each other, right? So you can do all three at the same time and then wait for all three to be done before you continue processing. But there's a lot of time that you can overlap, right? And so it will cut down on the total amount of time. Promises let you do that really easily. And it's because you have that control back that I'm not ready for this value yet, but I'm going to get it started. I'm going to start these three Ajax things. And then when I'm ready, I will read them from and bl potentially block. I will read them from the promises. Um, so another thing that uh, promises do, which is kind of going a little bit deeper, is that they're composable. 
you can't really compose callbacks. Yes, there are functions and you can compose functions, but not in the way that callbacks work. So when you compose two functions, you're making a third function that is the composition of the other two. But that doesn't really make sense for callbacks because what's important in a callback is that it will continue the execution of the, of the program when some value is ready. Whereas promises make that a, a thing that you can compose. So built into the promises model, uh, you can return a promise that's not even ready yet. You can return a promise from a promise and that will kind of chain the promises together. So there's this automatic composition model going on. You can also do interesting stuff like call promise.all, which will wait for all promises in an array to be done before continuing on. There's other ways to compose them like that that are, that are based on this same idea of like returning promises. Um, and the reason that can be done is that promises are first class. They are objects that you can treat like values. You can pass them around. You can return them from functions. You can pass them as arguments. You can save them to variables. They are first class. And callbacks, really the only thing you can do with them is call them. And you don't want to call them. You want to pass them to like an Ajax function or something. Um, but by making them first class, you now have the whole language available to you to manipulate them. And so they're like a first class coordination point. And there's th that's where all of its power comes from. Uh, finally, you know, one thing that people often talk about is how it gets rid of the indentation. And at first glance, that seems kind of not really hitting very deep. It's kind of a shallow concern. It's just like syntax. And, and I think that that's, it's true. It's just a shallow concern. But if you grant the people who are saying this the benefit of the, of the doubt, and they're, they're trying to touch at something deeper, what they're saying is really true, that it is taking some nested idea and bringing it to the surface. So this net, you would nest normally if you're using callback code, you, you get this, if you just have like a linear chain of callbacks, like I call this Ajax function, when the response comes back, I get an, uh, that it calls this callback and I make another Ajax and I call another Ajax. It just nests over and over deeper and deeper. And what the promise lets you do is turn that into a linear thing. So you still have to indent a little, but it's all on the same level. You're not going further and deeper each time. And that, that does help our code. It does make it look easier and it's easier to read. Uh, but more importantly, it's, it's that the nested uh, nature of it is captured in the structure of the promise. Like this is how the promise works. That, that nested thing that you're trying to do, call this, and then when that's done, call that, and then when that's done, call that, becomes just part of the uh, call chain of then function, the then methods that are called on it. So it's capturing some essential thing in an ergonomic way. And I think that that's, um, that's an important feature of it, that this, this common idea of, of callback chains has become linearized. It, it shows that there's something about the structure of promises that has, um, that mirrors that same indentation thing, but in a better way. All right, I'm going to recap. Um, there's actually five different points here. Um, so promises are a coordination point between the asynchronous call that you make and its result and your code. And it coordinates because you don't know who's going to happen first. 
You don't know if the Ajax request is going to come back first or if your code is going to be ready for the answer first. And so we need a point where that decision can be ignored. It doesn't matter who's first. It's going to figure out what, when to run what. Um, the, they do that by, promises do that by giving you back the control that you lost with callbacks. You, you gave up the control to the, to the async call um, when you shouldn't have given up all the control. Promises give you the control you need back. Um, they're composable. Promises are composable, which is a huge deal. And they do that by being first class. They are objects that you can pass around. And then they do help you with your indentation. And I think that that touches at a deeper, um, a deeper idea that you can actually see the structure of the callback chain in indentations and the promise has said no let's make that more let's let's take that indented structure that linear structure and turn it into an object and uh, method calls that that feels better that captures exactly what we're trying to do here this common thing okay so do yourselves a favor uh, if you don't know promises in JavaScript, go check them out. They they can really transform your code. Uh, they can turn an ugly mess into something more reasonable, let's say. Um, do me a favor. Uh, if you've liked this talk, I like to go deep. I like to think about these things more than, um, more than just the surface level. Uh, if you like this, then you should subscribe because there's more like this coming. Uh, if you've got questions, if you have an opinion, a different opinion on why promises are so great, um, I love to get into discussions about this. So email me at eric at lispcast.com. You can also find me on Twitter. I'd love to get into discussions on Twitter. I'm at Eric Normand with a D. And you can find me on LinkedIn. Let's connect. Just send me a little message. All right. Take care.